Via Blur, we offer a friendly reminder. to Have I Got News For You. My name is David Tennant, and in the news this week, there's evidence that today's news outlets are far too obsessed with clickbait, as someone hears that there's a squirrel on a skateboard in St James's Park. <laughs> <laughs> At the Department of Work and Pensions, some young civil servants react to being told they have to come into the office on Fridays. <laughs> And backstage on Russia's top satirical panel show, the guest host begins to lose confidence in the gags for this evening's performance. <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is an actress and comedian who said people laughed when she told them she was marrying another comedian. Well, we're not laughing now which is a shame, because they star in a comedy together. Please welcome Lucy Beaumont! <laughs> and on Paul's team tonight, a writer and a broadcaster whose bestseller, The Thursday Murder Club, features a group of eccentric old-timers who get together once a week to air their crackpot theory. <laughs> An idea he got one Thursday when he came and hosted this show. Please welcome Richard Osman! <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Lucy, have a look at this. Oh, this is childcare. There's some kids yeah. looking after Rishi. Yeah. Very nice of them. Oh, don't drink that carbon. It's got his wee in. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Rishi handing out papers. He's just working out how much his wife's going to make. <laughs> Quite a complex <laughs> equation. Should we start with Rishi Sunak and Why childcare? Why don't we do that? Yes. It transpired that the budget in the spring is going to include a measure that means they want to get childcare uh, going, so people going back to childcare get paid £600 unless they work for an agency and they get £1,200. They get double if they go through the agency. And his wife just happens, by coincidence, to have shares in one of those agencies. <laughs> and he didn't declare this at the time. No. He probably forgot he's got other things to do. I have no idea what. <laughs> this is where he failed. He failed uh, to declare the interest. Exactly. Labour's Angela Rayner said he'd created a transparency black hole. Whoa. <laughs> what does that look like? That was in one of your episodes. <laughs> 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 Shares in a lot of things. Do you think there's no company in Britain that Mrs. Sunak doesn't own? Yeah. Greg's, Greg's, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see in the next budget, won't we? Sausage rolls go up 50 pence. <laughs> <laughs> what else has Rishi been pushing to the nation more recently? What's he very keen for us all to do? Maths. Maths. Yes, he wants to reimagine our approach to numeracy. When I read that, like his school has the school he used to go to as a private art collection. I just thought, like, my school had a private art collection, but it was like a cock and balls behind the bank shed. <laughs> was it a Picasso? <laughs> That's a private art collection, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I used to teach maths. Can you Did believe? you? Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's announced this twice now, it's his thing. But this time he actually elaborated a little and he said, look, if we were better at maths as a nation, you know, we would be less likely to lose tens of billions of pounds. <laughs> you thought, does the name Liz Truss ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> 
again, he tried to get people interested. There's a very funny clip of him talking to some students, asking for questions. Yes, this is Rishi trying to sell the idea at a press conference and asking if anyone has any questions. Right, who's next? Anyone else? All good? <laughs> no, no, for you. Any, right, anyone else have some questions before we get over to the media? <laughs> OK, gosh, it's very quiet. Anyway, actually, I'll broaden up. Do you have any questions on things that are not related to maths? <laughs> uh, I'm all, also fine for those. <laughs> all fine? Right, OK, well, let's, uh, we'll turn to the media for some questions. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, he not... does look like a supply teacher. <laughs> <laughs> So he wants everyone to study maths until they're at least 18. Let's see how hard the maths will be. This Ooh. is a GCSE maths question. Who's got it? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I do know, but you, you, you go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've got grade five CSE maths, which is the equivalent of 25 yards breaststroke. <laughs> I think it's easy. They've written it weird, but you can see it's two times 104. So two, that's yeah, 208. 204. <laughs> Plus, yeah. Five times 103. <laughs> Did you get a point for that? No. Uh, <laughs> it's point naught 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 four. Oh, yeah. oh, oh look at that! Here we go. Ian Hislop gets a point for that. Isn't he? <laughs> How many people actually know that he got that right? <laughs> Two people. Look. <laughs> One day, maths will be revealed as a gigantic hoax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes fifteen men five days to run a bath. How many apples and a bunch of grapes? I mean, you know. <laughs> Who cares? Who's got a maths A level here? No. Yeah. Nothing? No? no. GCSE? No. You taught maths. You're a maths teacher. <laughs> this is the state of education in this country. <laughs> I wasn't happy about it either. I didn't want to be there. I once said half of you aren't going to get your GCSE. That's nearly 50%. <laughs> what does Rishi blame for our poor maths skills? Pranksters. Once you get past 12, there are no other numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I surprised myself with that. <laughs> Rishi blames the anti-maths mindset. Yeah, we just heard it. <laughs> <laughs> he continued, I won't sit back and let this cultural sense that it's OK to be bad at maths put children at a disadvantage. He has a point. He has a real point. A decimal because... point. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the report on claims of bullying by Dominic Raab has yeah. been handed to number 10, but they're not going to make a decision on it today. Although we are recording this the day before you see it, so by the time you see it, who knows? <laughs> Do anyone want to make up what we think is going to happen in the next 24 hours? Yeah. Well, I was going to declare the result of the bullying inquiry, but then he said he'd thump me, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you only have to look at him to realise he's completely innocent. You only have to look at him to realise he's completely guilty. <laughs> Do we have to cover every possible eventuality here? Yeah, of course you do. And to go up and make that statement with Paul Chuckle from the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, may he rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere in Westminster, Jeremy Corbyn and Keir Starmer have been telling each other they're not friends anymore. Oh. Yes. They've fallen out. Starmer said in a recent interview he wasn't friends with Jeremy Corbyn. No, I would not call him a friend. But he did. He did. In 2019, he said he's a colleague, a friend, and he led us through some difficult times. And Jeremy Corbyn said, this is playground stuff. He did. And then he said, and actually, we weren't friends. <laughs> That's exactly it. Jeremy Corbyn said, it makes me sad, actually. I don't know why he would say that. Why did he announce to the world that I was a friend and then a short time later that I was not a friend? It's playground stuff. Uh... And then added, I never regarded him as a friend. <laughs> I didn't spend time hanging out with him. <laughs> Which Scottish politician might be arrested this week? I presume you're assuming that Nicola Sturgeon might be arrested. I'm assuming nothing. It's just a speculation. Yeah, I, I would think now it's rude not to arrest her. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon might be the next Scottish politician to be arrested after it emerged that she blocked scrutiny of the SNP's finances only a few weeks before the arrest of her husband. SNP First Minister Humza Yousaf has said he knows nothing and everyone believes him. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all gone quite sexy, though, hasn't it, now, the SNP? With, like, lies, police uniforms. I'm interested now. Yes. In the SNP, because <laughs> Happy Valley's finished. I <laughs> <laughs> need to get my teeth into.
So this is all Rishi Sunak's insistence that everyone should learn maths up to the age of 18. According to the latest figures, more than 8 million adults have the numeracy skills of a nine-year-old. Not great. Good enough to be SNP treasurer, however. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Sunday Times Rich List, Rishi Sunak and his wife have a combined wealth of £730 million. But in much the same way that me and Usain Bolt have a combined total of eight Olympic gold medals. <laughs> <laughs> this week, the report into Dominic Raab was handed over to number 10. Raab has had to pay a large sum for his own legal defence into allegations of bullying. But he will get some of it back when he takes Rishi Sunak's dinner money off him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tory party chairman Greg Hans was spotted on the Laura Kunzberg show having written notes on his hands. Look at that. <laughs> so Greg Hans reads notes off his hands. <laughs> now we know why Ed Balls keeps glancing down below the desk and good morning again. <laughs> Richard and Paul, take a look at this. Hmm. Right, OK, this is obviously a massive a start to a, a big run in 1946. This is the runner, uh, the female runner, part of our death. It was a marathon. Was it a marathon? Like an ultra marathon. I ultra think, marathon. Towards the end, she got injured and she took a lift in a car and then got out and then carried on and came third. <laughs> You're absolutely right. What first alerted officials to the possibility that Scottish GP Yuasha Zakarchevsky hadn't run the entire distance? They saw her getting out of a car. <laughs> <laughs> Near the finishing line. <laughs> She asked the organizer to tip the driver. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, she was wearing uh, one of those watches and she'd done like one of the miles she'd done in sort of one minute, seven seconds. Yeah. <laughs> it was GPS tracking data found that she'd reached a superhuman top speed of 35 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> and that for part of the event, she had followed the main road rather than the race route. <laughs> Somebody did that entirely on the train. It took them five days and three hours. <laughs> <laughs> what explanation did Dr Zakarchevsky give for accepting a lift in a friend's car? She said it's a really, really long way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she told the BBC, I was tired and jet-lagged and felt sick. <laughs> she also said she had become lost, her leg was feeling sore <laughs> and she'd started to limp and that she was feeling unwell and spaced out and not thinking clearly, adding... <laughs> but I don't want to make excuses. No. <laughs> Staying with sport, why was the World Snooker Championship interrupted? Oh, yes, yeah, there was a guy that got up on the table and, uh, you know, threw some orange paint around and uh, they had to sort of uh, postpone that particular play. Let's have a look at it. Well, I don't quite know what that was for. Oh. I mean, you know, if the players will sit there drinking oil during the match... <laughs> <laughs> then this is the, I mean, snooker, I mean, they did it because it's live, but it, the relevance of snooker to oil consumption is, well, it's hard to see. It's suggested on the front page of The Sun that he's a toff, is what I saw, so maybe he sort of saw this as uh, didn't really care because it was a working-class sport. I saw it on the news, but with the sound down, and I thought they'd gone a bit, you know, like the Super Bowl at half time. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to jazz it up a bit. <laughs> An adjoining match was also interrupted by another protester, Margaret Reed, 52. Which is not a bad break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did Master of Ceremonies Rob Walker react to the disruption? With anger, I suppose. Well, let's have a look. Having spent the money, your train ticket, potentially hotel as well. Yeah, make no mistake. Yeah, this is why you know they're doing it. The, you've got is that Rob Walker there? The, Go on, uh, Rob. Yeah. How many Listen, jobs has he's got? He's, he's commentator. I see him driving a bus. The only one. He's got the uh, marigolds on as well. Go on, Rob. Yeah, Fair Rob. play to him. <laughs> now you see the colour of that paint. That's the colour of our new bedroom curtains. <laughs> I forgot we'd bought new bedroom curtains. Yeah. Then... <laughs> <laughs> you volunteered to hang them for me. <laughs> One of the voices you heard there was uh, Jimmy White, who knows a thing or two about hoovering powder off a table. <laughs> um... <laughs> One Just Stop Oil activist made a very good point about the advantages of stopping using fossil fuels. Here he is on Jacob Rees-Mogg's show on GB News. Let's take a look. If we just stopped oil now, the lights would go out. 
Well, we wouldn't have to see you then, would we? But we're not asking for that. <laughs> Remarkably quick thinking, there. Eh? So this started with the story of the ultra runner who was later discovered to be an ultra cheat after it emerged she'd been driven in a car for part of the race. Her disqualification was confirmed by race director Wayne Drinkwater. <laughs> Along with his running colleagues Brian Stretch first, Chris Pace Yourself and Danny Have Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a Just Stop Oil protester interrupted a first round game during the World Snooker Championship. The resulting mayhem was so chaotic, several members of the audience woke up. <laughs> <laughs> to the one armed bandit of news. Mm. Fingers on buzzers, teams! Yeah, uh, who's that, Paul? Yes, this is Fox News. They've just had to pay out. There was going to be a huge court case uh, in America. Fox News was full of stories after Trump lost the election, saying, well, it's the machines. They're fixed every time somebody voted for Trump. It came out for a vote for Biden. They were willing to tell lies, but they knew to be wrong, so they wouldn't lose any viewers. And Rupert Murdoch just couldn't face this becoming a court case, so he's paid up something like $670 million, something like that. 787.5 million. Point fa point 0.5 yeah. is important. If yeah. I understood maths, it would be a big figure. <laughs> um, it's not just a big figure, it's a record defamation payout ever for anything. Is it? There's another election machine and they're going to try and sue him for 2.7 billion. Mm. Um, I'm not following it very closely. Um, <laughs> what Fox News did basically was lie to the American people, say that Trump is right, the election's been stolen, and now they've admitted this isn't true. So I would say that it's treason and that some 92-year-olds could go to jail. What, for life? Or six weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever comes sooner. Yeah. <laughs> the figures are just staggering. Mm. I mean, I sound very excited. I mean, there was a time when I had the record libel payout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> CNN reported the settlement amount of $787.5 million mm. is actually nearly ten times the valuation of their company. <laughs> so, hard to say no to it, I guess. Hard not to settle. What are they going to do mm. with all that money? Will the they pimp up those voting machines? Like, they could make them, you know, like simulators where you walk in and you're like on a roller coaster or, you know, go in and vote and then you come out and your hair's been done. And... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, will they just share it amongst them or will they use it for the machines? Well, it. <laughs> It's a good question, because it's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. How have the other US news channels reacted to this? CNN, I imagine, would be quite happy. Yeah, let's see what CNN had to say. Fox uh, issued a statement saying, quote, we are pleased to have reached a settlement of our dispute... dispute with Dominion voting <laughs> systems. We acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. The settlement reflects... I'm sorry, this is going to be difficult to say with a straight face. <laughs> this settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. <laughs> we are hopeful that our... Dis sorry. <laughs> the lawsuit between Dominion and Fox is part of an ongoing battle over free speech and media accountability. In the US, it's led to accusations of election rigging, incitement to violence, a riot at the seat of government and several deaths. In the UK, Match of the day only showed the goals one week. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here we go again. What's this all about? Ian. It's uh, called a cassette tape. It's a sort of modern thing you put music in. <laughs> yes. And it plays. You can put a pencil in it as well and... <laughs> I've got one here. <gasps> oh. Who remembers that? Yeah. And why are they in the news? Huh. <laughs> oh. So Ian thought this round was called Guess the Object. <laughs> <laughs> They're not making a comeback, are they? Yeah, making a comeback. There's loads of songs from my youth that I... that when they get to a certain part, I expect them to stop. Yes. Because it was at the end of a side of a tape. <laughs> <laughs> so when they carry on, I'm like, oh... It's got, it's, got, it's got another half of the course, has it? <laughs> Who knew Matt Bianco wrote another half to that song? <laughs> Yeah, after a resurgence in vinyl, it's now emerged that sales of the cassette tape are at a 20-year high. Oh, yeah, but I haven't sold any in yeah. 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, have you returned to the wax cylinder yet? Are you, <laughs> where are you up to? Um, no, I can, I can stream. 
<laughs> well, you can, you've got to expect it at your age, haven't you? <laughs> Very different from your age. God. Indeed, <laughs> very different indeed. In other news, a T-Rex has been sold at auction. Here it is. The skull came from Montana, the body was dug up in Wyoming, and they went all the way to Switzerland to get that lady in the cardigan stuck to that pole. <laughs> How much do you think it's worth? 1.7 million. A bit more than that. Wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio bidding for it? Oh, was he? It must be too old for him. <laughs> <laughs> The skeleton sold for five million pounds. Wow. Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. The four are Bolton Wanderers, Brecon Beacons National Park, BBC News and Toblerone. <laughs> yes, Paul. Yes, well, I think well, the Brecon Beacons this week announced that they were going to change the name from Brecon Beacons to a Welsh name. Mm. Toblerone can no longer sort of feature a mountain on their packaging because they're, um, I don't think they're made in Switzerland anymore. Is that right, Richard? Yes, I think Slovenia mm. or something like that. Yes. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> Toblerone's the odd one out because all the other three have changed their names recently, but Toblerone has had to change the design of their packaging. I'm going to have to tell you, they've all had a rebrand. Yeah. Apart from Bolton Wanderers, right. who've had a change of stadium sponsor. Oh. The League One team recently revealed they've struck a new stadium sponsor deal with a local building products company called Tough Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Which means for the next mm. five years, they'll be playing in the Tough Sheet Community <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> it could be worse, though. Which did National League team Southend United yes. accidentally name one of their stands? Yes, well, they had, I think it was an estate agent or something called Rose, and it was the West Stand. Gilbert and Rose, those, yes. became known as the Rose West Stand. That's it. <laughs> 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 and how are the Brecon Beacons National Park having a rebrand? Who wants to go at pronouncing it? Banai Brecon-Yog. That sounds quite good. Let's so. cross to our Welsh correspondent. The correct pronunciation is Banai Brechainiog. Banai Brechainiog. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> he's very good, isn't he, Michael Sheen? Yeah, he's Don't good. Don't you think? He's all right. Oh, he's good. <laughs> you know what? Anything he does, he carries. Yeah. He no, he does. He does. <laughs> and so he's got such charisma. He ha I mean, he's the actor of his generation. Oh. And, <laughs> and I love his floor polish. <laughs> <laughs> Do people in Scotland like you as much as people in Wales like him? <laughs> he's... he's versatile, that's the thing. Yes, isn't he's versatile. <laughs> he comedy and drama, which a lot of actors can't. No, they can't do it. <laughs> Doesn't rely on props. Exactly that. Doesn't rely on props. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, yeah, you're not a prop. No. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> So what rebrand have Toblerone been forced to make? Do they have to change the mountain? Yes. They've had to remove the Matterhorn from packaging. Oh, I see. A handful of people are said to be gutted, but most of Switzerland's pretty neutral in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> Toblerone can no longer use the Matterhorn on their packaging. Another protected name under threat is the Dundee Fruitcake, or, as it's better known, the accountant for the SNP. <laughs> <laughs> How was the BBC News Channel rebranded this month? Uh, BBC News and BBC Worldwide That's have just right. become BBC. Yeah, mm. meaning the two channels are now sharing content and they've also told reporters on location that in order to gain the trust of viewers, they should dress down, try to look more sweaty and dirty. What? <laughs> what? Ah, you should see what I'm wearing under here. <laughs> um, and why should Estonian politician Rain Epler consider a rebrand. Oh, does it mean something in Estonian that's rude? No, it's not that. Erfler has been labelled by The Independent as a far right-wing political figure accused of promoting xenophobia. Uh, so you're probably assuming he's some sort of lunatic, but here he is. <gasps> <laughs> wow. Oh, dear. I mean, honestly, Michael Sheen can turn into anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication the Handwritten Letter Appreciation Society. <laughs> if you really want to wind up the editor, drop her an email. <laughs> we start with... Man surprised to find what on flight to Belfast? Greta Thunberg. 
Yeah. Is it leg room? <laughs> Man surprised to find he is only passenger on flight to oh, Belfast. Wow. That's the dream. This is Paul Wilkinson, found himself as the only person on a flight from Portugal to Belfast. According to The Times, the surprised passenger was treated like a king. The cabin crew threw eggs at him and said his wife should never be queen. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Hull opens experimental new what? Chip butty that you can live in. <laughs> Combined bungee jump massage parlour. No. In and out in five minutes. I think they've got one of them. <laughs> Is it is a Philip Larkin centre? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hull opens an experimental new all-you-can-eat crisp buffet. Oh, I did know, yeah. Oh. yeah. Everyone's look, raving about it. Yeah. This is the news that a city centre bar in Hull is offering an all-you-can-eat buffet of 30 different crisp varieties. The organiser of the event said, who doesn't like a crisp sandwich? A cardiologist? <laughs> 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 Next, the handwritten letter Appreciation Society's birthday celebrations included what? The hunting down and ritual slaughter of moon pig. <laughs> <laughs> it was a postbox crawl to all 30 of Swanage's postboxes. Oh, we would have got there in the end, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Along with the postbox crawl, the handwritten letter Appreciation Society also had a cake. Look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sweet. Oh. oh, that's lovely. And in three weeks' time, someone will get that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're a member of the handwritten letter Appreciation Society, congratulations for surviving the winter. <laughs> So on that bombshell, the final scores are... Ian and Lucy have four points. <laughs> Paul and Richard have 14. Oh, 14 points. Well done. Chris, Chris oh, yeah. Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Let it go, Harry. They're not going to invite you. <laughs> <laughs> on which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Lucy Beaumont, Paul Merton and Richard Osman. And I leave you with news that in Berkshire, there's a mix-up in the celebrity bake-off tent when one of the contestants realises they've accidentally iced a hat. <laughs> <laughs> in Downing Street, after trying both wide-angle and zoom lenses, photographers have to accept there is no way of taking a balanced picture. And as King Charles promises to make his coronation environmentally friendly, Swedish royals begin their low-carbon footprint journey to London. <laughs> Good night. Start to wet your whistle. We've more Friday night comedy over on BBC Sounds, including the news quiz, the Now Show, and Dead Ringers. So what are you waiting for? If you prefer your comedy a little closer to home, stay right where you are. The Cleaner is next. David, you were fantastically mm. good tonight. Oh, so good. I can only think of one man who would have done it better. <laughs> Oh, Michael, I'm being thrilled. <laughs> <laughs>